Hey everyone, and welcome to the second video in the series on Google SketchUp for Schools in iSTEM. Now, in Google SketchUp for Schools, the easiest way to get there, which wasn't mentioned in the previous video, is if you go to a Google page just like this under your school account. So make sure it is your school account up in this corner. Okay, so make sure this is your school account. That's my school account. And you need to go to the waffle, the Google Apps waffle. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to click on Google SketchUp for Schools. Now it's opening up a whole new window, but that's really what we want. Once Google SketchUp for Schools has loaded, it will either take you to a home page such as this one, and you can see there I've done a whole bunch of different drawings, including a couple of dice. Or it will just take you straight to the canvas. We're going to do one of these dice in this video. So I'm going to create new. And it brings up my blank canvas. I'm going to get rid of my man because I don't need him. And I'm going to save by going into my drive and finding the folder that I want to use. Find my iSTEM folder. And I'm doing this in uh, the computer aided design section. And if I spell the word dice correctly and name my file. It's really important that we do that at the beginning so we don't lose any work that we've done as we're going if we forget to hit the save button. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pan across, pan across so that I can center what I'm looking at and then I'm going to zoom in. Now as you can see there, as I'm zooming, wherever my cursor is pointing, that's where it zooms from. To start my dice, I need to get the rectangle tool, All right, straight up rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw a square that is 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters. Now to do that, I just click in the origin. I don't hold down, I just click, and I drag it out. And then I'm just going to type 40, 40, in the box at the bottom. Down here where it says dimensions, I'm going to type in 40, 40, 40. What I need to do next is I need to use my push pull tool. And I'm going to click again, I'm not going to hold it, I'm just going to click and start dragging up. And I'm going to type in my dimensions of 40. And now I have a 4 centimeter or 40 millimeters cube on my canvas. I'm going to start with the one. Good place as any to start on a dice is with the number one. And I'm going to need some guidelines so I can get my dots into some logical and structured positioning. I'm going to find the corner, which is labeled with the endpoint. I'm going to drag it all the way up to the opposite corner, another endpoint, and click again. Just remember, you don't have to hold down the left click button on your mouse to be able to make this work. Just click it once and start dragging. Click it a second time to end whatever you're drawing. I'm going to change my rectangle now to a circle. I'm going to find the midpoint of the line that I just drew. And I'm going to drag it out and I'm going to go six millimeters. For the radius and now I have my dot in the middle. I'm going to go back to my cursor using the shift key. I'm going to make sure I very carefully only select the line there. I'm going to get rid of it. Now something that you can do is just straight up use the eraser key or the eraser icon. It does exactly the same job. Now if I was to 3D print that dice, 
isn't going to actually look like it has a number one on it. So I'm going to use that push pull tool again. And I'm going to push my dot in. So I'm going to click on it once with the left click. I'm going to push it in. So you can see there if that's pulling it out, that's pushing it in. And I'm just going to go two millimeters in. Now it's very important that you don't move your mouse while you're typing because it won't recognize that you want it to stop. It will think that you want to keep going. Now remembering that dice, a six sided dice at least, opposite sides add to seven. So I now need my orbit tool, go around the other side of my dice and put in the six so that the one and the six add to seven. And again, I need some guidelines, only this time I'm gonna go straight. So midpoint at the top to the midpoint at the bottom and you'll notice that that line when I do the next one is blue because it's following the blue axis. Now I'm using those midpoints, get them right, I'm using the midpoints to make sure that those lines are equidistant. That means that they are the same distance apart. Now I can put in some circles. I want this line same radius again of six and then over here same radius again of six do the other ones so finding those midpoints keeps everything structured and the same width apart using the same radius for your circle each time Now you could copy the circle as a component, but then it would be harder to place it appropriately uh, if you wanted to do that. Using the eraser tool, or you can use the cursor again. Just select those lines to get rid of, but be very careful that you don't actually get rid of your circles. But Control Z. On your keyboard should bring them back in no time or you could even use the undo button over here if you need to zoom in and get the spot Push-pull tool again, and just two millimeters in. Okay, so that's the one and the six done. Now using the idea of guidelines, we're going to do the 2 and the 5 and then the 3 and the 4. So we can do the 2 and the 5 on these faces using diagonals. And then midpoint lines. This one's going to be the 2. And the other side will be the five. Push pull tool again. And I think you can see the pattern forming. All right, let's get through the rest of these numbers.
And there we have it. Our six sided dice drawn in three dimensions in Google SketchUp for schools. And it's ready to be exported in a file to be 3D printed. Now, one of the things we can do to this image is we can change some paint colors. So we can choose our paint box and we can make the outsides different color. We can make the inside a different color so the dots can be different colors. We can change the color of every surface. But what we can do to 3D print is up here under download as an STL file. You can see their download model as STL file for 3D printing is what comes up. And that will allow us to send it to a 3D printer to create in real life. Now, this has given you some basic skills if you have managed to create a dice that looks like mine, or at least looks like mine from this direction. Uh, you can draw your squares using dimensions, and they come up down here. You can use your circles using dimensions. You can think, keep everything structured and logically placed using guidelines, and you can erase those guidelines and then change the color of parts of your model. Have a play with other options within the model and within SketchUp for Schools. And in the next video, we'll have a new project. Thanks for watching.